Hello guys, welcome to Jim Will Shave. Midweek shave. Uh, I'm actually at home at the moment. I'm actually going on a, an evening job, believe it or not. Yeah, haven't done one of those for a while. Didn't even think I'd be doing them in my new job, but alas, I am. Right, continuing with Italian soaps month. So for today, one of my favourites from the good fellow smile, Pino Alpestra. Pino Alpestra. Now, I've had this, oh, I don't know, I think about 18 months, maybe, round about there. But at the time, it was a new formula, and it's the uh, traditional shaving soap vegetal formula. And it's the AJ1 base, the AJ1 formula. Gorgeous soap. There's the soap there. I've taken a big chunk out because I sent a sample to somebody. But if you like outdoorsy scents well as the label says pino alpestra alpine alpine and it really is it is like walking through a forest and you you're smelling the uh pine needles the alps the fresh air the foliage crunching underfoot it really really does take it outdoors gorgeous scent gorgeous scent is that writing on the back it's very very small but i can't read that well, it tells you how to use it, basically, but scent notes, basically, imagine pine trees, the spice, sage, it's autumn, a little chill in the air, leaves are crunching underfoot, bit of dampness in the air, and that's what you've got. Gorgeous scent, gorgeous scent. And I've already been hauling that up in my uh, over overkill, as always. It's about a 60 second load, this, believe it or not. Yep, yeah, 60 second load. And I've used my uh, Yaki 24mm cashmere nut, synthetic. And that's the lava I've got. Good stuff. It's a light lava, as uh, usual, with the good fella smile. Ray for today, as you can see. I've got, uh, in fact, I've got quite a growth on today. I haven't shaved for a couple of days. So for that reason, I've brought the beast into play. The Mueller R41 GS. This is the stainless steel Mueller GS. Lovely razor, very shiny, flashy handle, good to hold, nice weight, and the beast. Now, I'm not too confident. Uh, I wanted a green, I wanted a green thumbnail pick, guys. So, uh, for that reason, I've chose the 7 o'clock Gillette 7 o'clock green. Now, I'm not overly confident because it is quite a thin blade and as we all know the Mueller R41, the Beast, is quite an aggressive razor. But that said, if you can just see the blade exposure there, it is clamped down pretty tight. There's not enough, there's not a great deal of blade protruding from underneath the top cap, so it should be held steady. It should be held steady. Just the slightest overhang there very very slight to be aware of and i don't think that's going to catch your nostrils however this is jim will shave and uh, i can't rule anything out so okay i'm back sorry about that so rushing around to get to work now don't even see you can actually see the stubble showing through this lava see the little black ends there everywhere so it is it is quite a light thin airy lava so, let's get cracking. I'm a proper gonad at times, you know. Excellent blade feel. Something like the R41. The Beast. You've got a heavy growth. You want it down with minimum fuss. Open comb, of course. And you do have to be a little bit careful when using the beast. I don't know, is the name beast, is it justified? We'll probably find out in a minute, will we? 
<laughs> Can you see the claret? Blade's actually working quite nicely. The goatee knocked down easily. Easily knocked down. And the 41, you don't have to keep it soap free. I like to do, use little light strokes when using the R41 for obvious reasons. But so, uh, yeah. Up to now, I'm enjoying it. Doesn't look around the 41, it really doesn't. That gelette green is actually uh, very smooth. I don't think I've used a uh, gelette green or a yellow or a black for quite a while actually. Wow, that's amazing. That's that's so close already. I could uh, I could walk out the door now, and that would be uh, perfectly acceptable. But I'm not gonna see the head's a little scruffy as well. Well, there's not a lot of bristle left on here, fellas. I've just watched Mr. G shave. He's uh, John June. He's uh, managed to get hold of a Rolls razor, antique Rolls razor. I've got a couple, but uh, when I received them, I looked inside the tin and I looked at the state of them, and ooh, no. But uh, the one John June's actually got hold of. It's uh, it looks brand new, and it's on a pass around. And uh, Mr. G's just shade of it, and uh, I think it's me it's coming to next. So that's going to be an experience and a half. <laughs> and I'll get it out. Gary, Mr. G, he was, uh, see the little, what are you doing? using it to start off with, but uh, no, he did a good job. Didn't produce any pink lava. I hope I can say the same when it comes to my turn. <laughs> this is amazing. So there's hardly any bristle left here. Excellent razor when you've got a heavy growth. A lot of people will tell you it's not a beginner's razor. What? I don't know. It doesn't take that long to master. No razor does really. When you use it the first time, and you may pick up your neck. Don't slice. <laughs> but you're sharp learn your lesson. And you'll adapt accordingly. It does seem strange that a lot of people are advised to buy these really mild razors to start with. And before you know it, they're to step up. Nothing wrong with that. Well, sometimes I think it would be beneficial to some people just to uh, step up straight away. 
That's why I like to recommend the Rockwell 6S to people who are just starting off. 6X, 6S, Rockwell 6C. Because you've got the options there straight away. Wow. What a razor. What a razor. I love it, I love it, I do. <laughs> wow. Again, very little left. And uh, if I was to wash off now to work, I could quite easily skip the uh, third pass. But we don't want to do that, do we? How's everybody else doing? Halfway through the week. At the weekend, I'm going to uh, Bath and Oxford. Spa town, the Roman spa town of Bath. And the University City of Oxford. Oh, little, little weeper there. Always expected on the neck. So let's see with the... Uh, R41, that's where I have my little growths, my little cling ones. Oh, there's a lava left. I don't think I've ever used GFS with a, a dome shave. Thinking about it. Okay. Against the grain, fellas. Against the grain. Every now and again, I get the odd air that comes up right across the cheekbone there. So after every so many shaves, I'm shaving right underneath the eyeball. <laughs> You can see the lava getting light there. Now on the chin. Woo! Well impressed. It impresses me more and more each time I pick it up. I'm liking it. I'm liking it, liking it, liking it. Okay, it's weeper time. Watching a thing on uh, Netflix yesterday. Was it Netflix or freebie? It's reconstructing a World War One trench scene. And, well, it shows you that off it there. Well, he's got a really, really, really big moustache. It's that little weeper there. And they come under gas attack in the trenches. And the German respirator from World War One, it only came to about there. As opposed to over the head or further back. So the seal was around about here. Now this film, this documentary was produced in uh, the United States. So now the trench comes under gas attack. And Hitler. I hope nobody reminds me mentioning that name, but just saying what it was on the TV anyway. He dons his respirator because of his bushy moustache. There's no seal. So bits of gas are getting into his respirator. 
So the end he has to like take a big gulp of air and hold his breath for several minutes until the gas has dissipated. The documentary then shows you Hitler taking his bayonet and trimming his moustache down and that's how the Hitler moustache was born. Now I didn't know that, I don't know if it was based on fact but it's uh, yeah makes sense. That a weaver? No. What it was? What it was? Wow. BBS. BBS. Excellent. Prince. Doesn't take masses of time to rinse off. Got a tag video. I was tagged to do a, a death row shave, yeah, a death row shave, and uh, I'm just currently putting things in place now to perform a death row shave, so uh, it's taken a lot of thinking, a lot of thought, and uh, I'm having to uh, get props to help with it, that'll be coming sometime in the future, hopefully. Charles, uh, Chuck Shaving Channel, Charles, he's uh, sending me over some US prison razors from the United States. Okay, now as you'd expect with the uh, Mueller R41, that is completely BBS, completely BBS, the neck everywhere. Skin feels great, a nice waxy feel. And there's no Velcro left here whatsoever. Perfect. Absolutely perfect shave. Just that one little weep from under there. But I can live with that. Okay. I love this. The matching after shave smash. Strong scent, and as I say, it's more akin to an EDT. The scent does last for quite a long time. Oh, that's a nice burn. That makes you know you're alive. Oh God, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Smell that. That's nice, isn't it? That's so fresh. Oh, that's a pleasure. That's a pleasure to splash on my face, it really is. I'd say the scent strength on the, uh, the splash, I'd give it a seven, maybe 7.5. Okay. Just go through the uh, customer re <coughs> recap. <coughs> so for today, Italian soap, the good fella smile, Pino Alpestra, gorgeous. Razor for today was the amazing Mueller R41 GS stainless steel. And in there, I had a brand new seven o'clock green, which Surprised me, it worked better than I thought it would work. So I was lavered up in my executive shaving super duper size lava bowl. And with this, I used the 24 millimeter Yaki Kashmir brush. And we were all finished off with the matching after shave splash. So, it's not many cents better than this. Oh, it's so outdoorsy. Okay guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for all the recent subs, comments. I appreciate you all. Okay, guys, stay safe now. Bye-bye.